Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk to you about how a long-term low-carb diet can contribute to low testosterone and other androgen hormone production. Low-carb and sugar-free dieting appear to be a good strategy for accelerating fat loss and losing weight on the scale. And it will certainly be a very quick way to do this. If you cut all of the carbs from your diet, if you remove the sugars from your diet, you will hands down lose weight and you will probably lose weight fast. However, although this is considered to be a very good thing and very favorable for most people in the modern world, that are trying to lose weight, this rapid weight loss comes at the expense of your long-term metabolic health. It can burden the liver, deplete the glycogen or energy stores in the body, and ultimately stress every cell of your body. Not to mention that the metabolic stress induced by low-carb and sugar-free dieting can also greatly interfere with the production of the protective anti-stress androgen and anabolic hormones in your body like testosterone. But in order for us to understand exactly how low carb dieting can interfere with androgen hormone production, let's very quickly review what occurs in the body, hormonally speaking, when you go on a low carb or sugar free diet, especially over a long period of time. So ultimately what happens and why people tend to go on low carb sugar free diets in the first place is that they can stimulate lipolysis or fat metabolism. And if they do it long enough, they can stimulate a process or a metabolic state known as ketosis. So lipolysis refers to the liberation of stored fat in the body. So it is a process of liberating fat cells to ultimately be used as energy. Now this seems like a good thing because if you're trying to lose weight or lose fat specifically, you're gonna to wanna to free up that stored fat to be eliminated from the body, right? Well, the problem is in order to enter this state of lipolysis, what first has to happen is that by avoiding or greatly reducing your consumption of sugars, dietary sugars, is that ultimately, because your cells use sugar to produce ATP or energy, what they are going to do in an attempt to get that sugar or glucose is they are going to start converting other substrates in your body, primarily the proteins in your body that make up your tissues, into sugar through a process known as gluconeogenesis. In the process of both gluconeogenesis, the conversion of proteins and non-carbohydrate substrates into sugar, and lipolysis, the liberation of fat for energy, is dependent on two stress hormones, adrenaline and cortisol. And it is the chronic elevation of both adrenaline and cortisol, these stress substances, that largely contribute to the interference of androgen hormone production amongst having many other negative widespread effects in the body. So when you deprive your body long enough of dietary sugars or carbohydrates, ultimately what happens is your liver glycogen, the stored glucose or sugar, becomes depleted. So if you're not consuming sugar, in other words, your body's going to first and foremost use up any of the stored sugar, also known as glycogen, for energy purposes and cellular function. And in this low carb state, your body's going to use up that liver glycogen. However, once the liver glycogen has become depleted and exhausted, and you're still carb deficient or you're not consuming dietary sugars, then your liver is going to go into an emergency state once it finds out that its energy reserves have been depleted. Think of it metaphorically as relying on your savings account to afford your daily expenses. Once you exhaust your savings account to make up for the lack of income, you're going to go into an emergency state. And this is what the liver does. Once the liver glycogen is depleted, it sends a message to your pituitary gland to shift the metabolism into emergency stress mode. And so once your pituitary gland gets the message that the sugar in the body is depleted, that the reserves are gone, it will send a message to your adrenal glands, the emergency fight or flight glands, to secrete adrenaline. And that adrenaline will start to liberate the fats from your tissues, from your body, to ultimately be converted into energy. And this again is a helpful adaptive response on the short term. But over the long term, to support a low carb diet, you have to stay in a high rate of lipolysis, which is dependent upon the overproduction of adrenaline and cortisol to both liberate the fat from your tissues or liberate the fat cells from storage in your body and to use that fat as energy. And the problem is, is that both adrenaline and cortisol have many negative side effects when chronically elevated. They can start to weaken the immune system. They can interfere with oxidative phosphorylation or sugar metabolism by increasing the production of free fatty acids which interfere with your cell's ability to oxidize glucose, which leads to the systemic 
lowering or slowing down of your metabolism overall, meaning that although your body is surviving, it's not surviving on much energy at all. So it's weakening the body's ability to produce cellular energy. Not to mention there are many other negative side effects, but getting to the main point of this video, these stress substances through a number of different mechanisms can actually interfere with the production of androgen hormones like testosterone. So one way that a low carb diet can contribute to low androgen or low testosterone production is again through the chronic production of cortisol. So cortisol in of itself tends to oppose the production of all of the androgen hormones. In one way, as I've talked about in this video here, cortisol can actually contribute to a phenomenon known as the pregnenolone steel where when cortisol is chronically elevated, as it will be in a low carb state, it can actually steal pregnenolone from a hormonal pathway and turn pregnenolone into more cortisol rather than pregnenolone turning into progesterone, which is actually a precursor to the production of testosterone in a different hormonal pathway. So in other words, if cortisol is chronically high, as it is in a long-term low-carb diet, it can actually interfere with the conversion of pregnenolone to progesterone and progesterone into testosterone, and instead contribute to an even greater production of cortisol. Another way that the low-carb diet can contribute to low androgen hormone production is again due to the high cortisol. So cortisol, when elevated, tends to actually increase the activity of the aromatase enzyme. And the aromatase enzyme actually converts your testosterone into estrogen. And not only will this lead to a deficiency of testosterone, obviously it will lower the levels of testosterone in the body, but it will increase the production of estrogen, and estrogen is antagonistic to the production of testosterone. So increased activity of the aromatase enzyme will create a very vicious condition of low testosterone and high estrogen. And looking at one final way that a low carb diet can lead to the interference of androgen production, consider the fact that when you enter this state of lipolysis, as you will when you deplete the glycogen from your body by not consuming carbohydrates, what's going to happen is an increased liberation of free fatty acids in the blood. So I mean, once you liberate those fat cells from the tissue to be used as energy, the fatty acids will not be converted back through to pyruvate to be turned into glycogen or energy. Only the glycerol backbones will of those fats, meaning that there's going to be an increased circulation of fatty acids in the bloodstream, which have many overlapping effects with estrogen. And as we learned, estrogen is an antagonist to testosterone. Not to mention that the free circulating fatty acids generally systemically slow down the rate of metabolism, by interfering with the cell's ability to oxidize glucose. So it can actually lead to insulin resistance and many other degenerative effects. So although a low carb and sugar-free diet will rapidly accelerate fat loss, it will at the expense of your health, your metabolic function, and androgen hormone production. So it's ultimately a very stressful way to lose fat. And if you consider the fact that people who starve themselves, people who are just starving or in a famine, they don't have enough food, people that maybe have degenerative wasting conditions like diabetes, autoimmunity, AIDS, and cancer also lose weight, just goes to show you that there are unhealthy ways and stressful ways to lose weight. And more often than not, losing weight is usually a sign or symptom of some sort of stress that the body is undergoing. But you can, of course, lose weight in a healthy way, especially if the weight gain is from something like hypothyroidism, where the thyroid gland is just not efficiently oxidizing the fats and sugars in your body and instead is storing it as fat in the body. So whether you're interested in losing weight or achieving an ideal body mass or optimizing your androgen output, so you know, let's say you have low testosterone, the things I'm gonna recommend is first and foremost, avoid the low carb sugar-free diets. Not only is a low carb diet going to contribute to a hypothyroid state, because the thyroid needs glucose to convert the inactive form into the active form to support oxidative metabolism, but also that low carb dieting will lead to metabolic stress that will increase the production of stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol, which are antagonistic to the androgen hormones. So what you're gonna wanna do instead is learn how to eat in a way that is supportive of good metabolic health. And as you probably guessed, this doesn't include low carb sugar-free dieting, but you are gonna wanna learn about the right sorts of carbohydrates that are actually supportive of good digestive health and metabolic health. Not all carbohydrates are created equally. There are many carbohydrate-rich foods that contain many other anti-metabolic, anti-digestive qualities to them, which are not gonna be supportive of good health overall. So if you wanna learn how to eat in a way that is supportive of good metabolic health, good thyroid function, and hormonal balance, be sure to visit our online wellness academy where we have multiple courses that will teach you exactly how to do that. Otherwise, that does bring this video to a close, so if you've enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't yet already. And if you're interested in learning more, be sure to check out our blog, our online wellness academy, and our online tonic herb shop, all which you can find in the description box below.